Well, hello, and welcome to Cooking with Phil Darst. I'm glad to see you here today. If this is your first time, I'm sure glad you have found us. And if you're a return viewer, why well, we're glad to have you. We appreciate your loyalty, and I tell you, we're going to have something special and somewhat unique today. The long story is that I was going to make a Indian dish, which is called mushroom mutter or I think they pronounce it Matar at times. I've looked it up, can't read Hindu, but I, I know that basically what it is is a great dish with mushrooms and green peas and uh, a few other ingredients and of course Indian spices. Now I've shown you a number of Indian dishes and I'm going to show you some more. But I Americanized this a while back and I've got to tell you it was delicious so I want to share it with you and show you how I modified it a little bit and put a few extra uh, and different ingredients in it than the Indians use and come up with a tremendous meal that I think you'll enjoy if you'll make it. So in the next few minutes I'm going to walk over here and show you what we're going to add to it and we'll get started cooking shortly. See you in a few minutes. Well, we're creeping up here on our ingredients list and I'm going to show you what we're going to put in this dish. There's a number of uh, ingredients here. So we'll start out and the first thing is uh, mushrooms. These are creminis, which is a small portabella. And if you remember here not too long ago, we made a dish with portobello mushrooms and spinach and uh, it actually is one of the most watched videos that we've done on this channel so uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Now one of the things that the Indian recipe calls for is green peas so I put the green peas in there we're going to use uh, not quite a cup of these about three quarters of a cup here a while back, if you remember, I made a dish with uh, cauliflower and spinach. And I had some leftover cauliflower. You know, when you're single, you eat a lot of leftovers. And if you buy a head of cauliflower, you got a lot of that leftover. So I decided to put some of this in here. And uh, it, it added quite a bit. A couple of my favorites that I use quite often. If you notice, I've already trimmed the stuff off of here that we don't want to eat. There's a carrot and there's a parsnip. Now I don't know if you've used a lot of parsnips or not. The difference to me is they seem to get a little sweeter. So we're going to put some parsnips in there and then of course we have our choice of onions. Uh, we can use a sweet onion. This is pretty sweet. This is a red onion which is a little different than the Spanish onion that I would often use and it's not quite as sweet as the Vidalia. Now, the other thing that we almost always use is garlic. And we're going to press this uh, into our dish a little bit later. So I've already cleaned off the skins. And then tomato paste is something that you can see I use a lot of it because this tube's getting pretty well down because we like tomato flavors. And the other thing along with the uh, tomatoes is fire roasted diced tomatoes. Now I like them fire roasted. You may not. To me they give a lot of extra uh, boost and flavor to a dish rather than just plain old tomatoes. You can use uh, uh, fresh tomatoes if you want but for some reason canned tomatoes seem to me a little bit better than the others. Now I'm going to show you the spices that we're going to use uh, in a second. My uh, rosemary out in my little herb garden died off, so I've got to use dried rosemary, but there's a little bit of that. I'm going to show you the quantities a little bit later. Uh, one of the other ingredients that I use quite often is thyme, and that's one of the things different than the Indian spices in here. And uh, a little touch of sage. Now, sage is something that I don't use terribly often. Maybe you don't either. But it seemed to give this dish a little special kick to it. And then we're going to get into making it creamy. Now uh, I'm using half and half here. Half cream 
and half milk. If you're a vegan or vegetarian, you can use coconut milk. I often use coconut milk in the dish, but in this case, I use uh, this. The other thing, there's some options. If you're vegan, vegetarian, this is a vegetable flavored soup base. And uh, you could use it in there. I'm going to put one of the uh, things that I use quite often. This is uh, better than bouillon. It's an organic product. This flavor is roasted chicken base. And I'm going to put some of it in here and it really is going to kick up the taste a little bit. So you've seen what's going to go into it. I'm going to chop everything up to save you the time watching that. In a few minutes we're going to come over to the stove and start putting this in a pot and I'm going to have a late lunch today. So we'll see you shortly at the stove. So we're about ready here. Now I'll show you what I've done while you were gone. I put the onions in here and the mushrooms. I like to boil those mushrooms down or cook them for about 10 minutes to get all the liquid out of them and know they're fully cooked and flavorful. And I put the onions in first. I cut those up in kind of long pieces rather than mincing them. So I've done that. Use some olive oil in it. And next step is I'm going to add the garlic. So here I'm going to put in a little coconut oil. And then I'm going to get my fancy little machine out here. And we're going to press some garlic into that oil. We don't like it in there too long because uh, we get burned garlic and I don't like that. Now, so we're going to put this in and uh, press it. I've mentioned before I'd rather press than chop or mint sometimes because that forces the juice in there. Those are some big hunks of garlic we got. And uh, let's see if I can get that out of there without getting burned severely. Here we go. So I'll cut that off there. Sure I get it on. Stir just a little bit again so we don't burn it. It's going to start blending with our onions and our mushrooms. goes the last piece in. Looks like I got some around the edge. We'll take that off here in a minute. And there we go. Now we got garlic. That was three cloves. You can use a couple if that's all you want or you can use four. I had a few pretty good sized ones there as you can see. So I'm going to have that meal enhanced with the garlic flavor. We'll see if we can get that the very last bite out of there. There we go. See, there was a lot of garlic. Didn't want to come out. So, we got garlic in there now. And then I'm going to start adding the vegetables before I add the liquids in. Okay, we got to stir it up again. There we go, we got that all right. Okay, now I'll set this aside, get that out of our way. And I'm going to start putting some other stuff in. Now, <clears throat> I've mentioned tomato paste, so I'll put on there what we think is about a tablespoon or so. So we're going to get the uh, flavor of that paste. That ought to be about enough. So I'm going to stir that around a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. It kind of helps deglaze the pan, but we're going to do that in another jiffy here. And then the next step. Now, in the comment or message down below the video, you're going to see the recipe and how much of everything I use. I've got our spices in here, 
and I've told you what I've used. That's thyme and rosemary and a touch of sage. So I'm stirring that all in there to blend and mix those flavors well. Let that sit for a second or two, and then we're going to start putting some vegetables in there. Go over here in the microwave. I've got the bouillon. Boil that up a little bit. And uh, again, I actually put some of the vegetable bouillon in there too. I suppose that's optional. I really think it adds a little different flavor than just the chicken. And again, for the vegans, that's all you have to use is a good vegetable bouillon. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put a trifle in there to deglaze my pan. Now I could use cooking wine if I wanted to. I've done that before. And of course, if you don't like alcohol, as I don't, uh, you'll find out that the alcohol does boil off. But I want to get the flavors married in there. And now we're going to start putting in the other stuff. So here's peas. There's not quite a cup of peas in here. And uh, that's the peas. So I'll stir them a little bit. And then the next step, now I told you that I used the carrot or showed you the carrot and the parsnips. So they're going in there now too. There they go. So we'll stir those around there a little bit. And I've got this on about medium heat. There you see it. Don't want to put that lid on there. I don't think that's going to be tasty. So here goes the cauliflower. Now some do and some don't like cauliflower. Actually, it doesn't taste like much like cauliflower when we get all this cooked up. And as you see, it's starting to fill up that pan about halfway. So we'll be putting the liquids in soon. But before we do that, I have our tomatoes here. It shows you how much juice you get in. I poured that juice out so that we wouldn't have the juice in, just tomatoes. But those again are diced fire roasted tomatoes. So I'm putting them in there. And uh, I'm going to stir them up a little bit more. And of course, as soon as we start putting the liquids in there, they're going to be blending well. And then I'm going to simmer it while you're doing something else. I've got a few things I need to do, but I'll simmer it for probably about a half hour. Now, here go the liquids. So let's start out first. Get every last morsel out of there. And, uh, hold on, we got to get that stuff in there. I got to, there we go. Okay, now there's that. See, I thought I better take a good look because I've got some bouillon down there. I need to get that in. Might as well use it all. And, uh, let's see. Are you going to go in there or not? I think you are. Okay, now we got that part out of the way pretty well. I guess that's a contrary little fella. There it goes. Okay, we got that guy in there. Now, I think we've used up all our vegetables, our garlic, and it's about time to put in just about a half a cup of cream and milk combo. And I've told you before, if you're a vegan or vegetarian, you don't have to do that. You can use coconut milk, which is something I do quite frequently, but I had some of this left over anyway, because I don't drink much milk. And uh, there it is. Now I brought it just about to where it's covering the vegetables. And I didn't add any water as you saw. I'm going to put just a skosh more milk in there and bring that right to the top. And that's about it for now. So my next step is to put the lid on. Yes, I'll give it a stir. And I'm going to turn this back to just barely simmering 
so that those flavors get together and uh, marry, I guess is one of the things that they say about them. But I'm going to tell you, this stuff's going to be good. So a little bit later, you should see me over to the table. There's not much more to do other than I'm going to stir it a few times. I'm going to set my timer here for about 20 minutes and see what happens. What we need to do is then to see how tender the vegetables are. Now, certain people like a certain tenderness. Some of them like them kind of crunchy. Some of them like it almost mushy. I usually like mine in between. So I'm going to check it a little bit later. But the next time you're going to see me, it's over there at the table because I'm going to enjoy this. So I'll see you at the table. Goodbye. Well, it's ready for me to sit down and eat, so I'm going to try it out. I've got my basil on here. I'm going to cut this up and put it in here, I guess. Because I kind of like basil along with this. I like it with about a lot of things. I uh, put this red serrano pepper out here to tell you that I decided to add a little bit of this to the dish that we're having. I uh, like it a little bit hot and I decided that was all right for me to do that. So we're getting to the place now where I'm going to be able to tell you how good this is. I'm going to have a mushroom first. Mushrooms are usually good. This is especially good because it's got some of the other flavors with it. A little piece of cauliflower here. Now again, I probably had that on the stove for about 40 minutes simmering, letting the uh, seasonings blend in. And then I let it set for a little bit before I put it down here in my bowl. It's kind of interesting. You'll notice I eat a lot of bowl meals. That means I only got one dish to clean other than my coffee cup. And I usually enjoy a little bit of coffee before or after a meal. So, we're going to wrap up today. I'll have the recipe down below the uh, video so you can see exactly what we put in here. I was going to tell you, this is really one of the better dishes that I've enjoyed. I think a lot of it has to do with the seasonings that we put in here. And again there, it's been Americanized. I Americanized several recipes. And I find that you might enjoy this. I hope you'll try it. And if you do, I wish you put down there in the comments how it was to you. If you want to make any changes, improve it, that's up to you. I'm going to try it and I'm going to give some to my neighbors after a bit. Uh, they're always awful good to me and they like to try some of my food. So I made an extra big batch today and uh, I'll give some away and I'll have a couple servings and uh, I'll enjoy it. But again, it's been very nice to have you here. I appreciate your attendance. If it's your first time, I'm glad you came and I hope you'll come back. And for those of you that have subscribed and are back often, keep coming back and bring your friends. Like it so that the algorithms from YouTube show it to more people. And the more people that see it, the more people are going to enjoy the meal, one. And two, a lot of them will subscribe and that's what we need is subscribers to continue providing this. The pay's not great, but it's fun to do, and I enjoy doing it for you. So be sure and hit the bell. Now, I've got a couple of other recipes that I'm going to come out with soon. Uh, and if you hit that bell, it's going to remind you when I do it, because I've got a few that maybe you haven't seen that I'm going to put in here. When we started this out, my granddaughter Amy was the person that we wanted to teach to cook. And I've got a few videos of Amy uh, over a year ago that I'm going to introduce you to because uh, one of these has had about a thousand people looking at it. 
and I'm sure you don't want to miss it. So we'll work that in probably later in the week. And of course next week we'll put up another one uh, if everything works out well. One of the reasons I do this is to show off my artwork. Now if you've noticed up by my head on that wall in the introduction I've usually got a couple small paintings that I put up there uh, and I change them from time to time. And uh, here is one that I've been working on a little bit. Now this is interesting because I started this probably a few years ago and I didn't like it and I put it aside and I wasn't sure why I didn't like it and finally I figured it out. I didn't like the way the guy was running for one thing but as you see this is a little boy, young boy, chasing a seagull out on Siesta Key Beach here off Sarasota. So one of the reasons I do this is to introduce you to my other channel which is Phil Darst Art. And if you're inclined to like art or want to learn more about it, I'm starting to put some tutorials in there and we'll have several soon that teach a little bit about the very basics of artwork if you happen to be interested. And if some people are, I'm really surprised at how many people are talented out here and yet I know a lot of people would like to operate and I've always felt if you uh, can write your name, you can probably learn to draw and paint. So that's something that I think over time we're going to introduce uh, some of the techniques that I use uh, as a painter and artist and show you what we do. I do sell my art. I don't think I can tell you where on YouTube. You can probably figure it out if you know my name and uh, uh, you've seen that in there. Just watch my other channel. So again, thanks for coming. I've certainly enjoyed your attendance, and I hope you have, and I want you to keep coming back, invite your friends, like it, subscribe if you haven't, and enjoy the rest of your week. I'm going to do the same. Goodbye now.